What's up guys, it's your good buddy Matthew here and I recently decided to make the switch from partial boils and extract brewing to full volume boils and all grain brewing. So when I made this decision I knew I was going to have to get some new equipment and one of those things was an immersion wort chiller. Now if you're new to all grain brewing or just new to brewing and you don't know what an immersion wort chiller is, it's basically this copper coil that you drop into your boil kettle at about 15 minutes left of the boil and that sanitizes the coil against any airborne bacteria or wild yeast that can contaminate your wort during the cool down process. But essentially what it does is it sends cold water through this tubing all the way through your wort and then it comes out as hot water which cools down your wort to pitching temperature a lot more efficiently than an ice bath or a cold water bath or anything else you would do. Now when you're doing extract batches and you're only boiling two and a half gallons of wort, you can very easily get your wort down to 100 degrees with uh, an ice bath in about 20 minutes. And once you get it down to 100 degrees, you just add the other two and a half gallons of cold water and you get about 70 degrees or 68 degrees, which is perfect for pitching. But when you're doing all grain and you're brewing six and a half gallons of wort, it takes a lot longer to cool that wort down. So that's when you need an immersion wort chiller because a lot of people say you need to get past the cold break in about 30 minutes so you don't affect the stability of your beer and you're risking contamination the longer you're cooling it down. So the faster you get it cooled down, the more efficiently, the better your beer is going to taste, the less likely it's going to be contaminated and the more shelf stable it's going to be so you can store it for longer and things like that. Plus, your brew day gets over with quicker. It's not fun to watch work cool down. So the quicker you can get it done, the better. So I decided against following any of the 20 foot tutorials online and I decided against buying one because I found I could build a double coil, which is what this is, a double coil immersion wort chiller at 50 feet long for around $60, $65. The copper for 50 feet was $50 and then I paid around $15 for the uh, extra supplies like adding these garden hose adapters and things like that. And I think it turned out a lot nicer. So I'll show you the actual chiller and how it came out. As you can see, it's not all slinky like, it's sturdy. Not like uh, a lot of the other wort chillers you see. It's nice and sturdy. It's got two coils and it's 50 feet long. So rather than cooling down, you know, uh, six and a half gallons of wort in like 20 minutes or 25 minutes or whatever most people get with their wort chillers, I'm cooling down wort in 10 minutes or under. So this is a lot more efficient. It doesn't cost much more. It costs less than you're gonna buy at retail and you get the nice uh, garden hose adapter so you can just plug your hose right into it. You don't have to be carrying around and fumbling with those long hoses hanging from it all the time. You can just plug those in unhook them when you're done and you just get on with your day. So this is a lot more efficient in my opinion. Uh, I feel like it was worth it. I felt like the benefits outweighed the extra cost. So if you guys want to build a cool double coil immersion work chiller like this, real nifty, real nice, then go ahead and watch the tutorial. Okay guys, these are the things you're going to need to build this particular work chiller. The First two things you're going to need are these half inch compression fittings or connectors. They look a little something like this. These are going to connect to the in and out of your copper tubing for your wort chiller. And those are going to connect to these two hose adapters, which you also need. You need a half inch female hose adapter, which looks a little something like that. That's going to be your cold water in. And you need a half inch male hose adapter, which is going to be your hot water out. And then there's a few optional things you can use uh, depending on your setup. Uh, I'm choosing to use thread seal tape which is going to help prevent leaks. You may have seen this before, maybe not, I don't know. And then if you're not using an outdoor hose or utility sink or something like that, you're going to need a garden hose aerator adapter which I do need because I'm going to be using my kitchen sink. Another thing I'm choosing to use is this 18 gauge 25 foot copper wire. I'm just going to use this to kind of connect the copper tubing so it doesn't turn into a slinky when I'm carrying it around and annoy me because I don't want to be annoyed with this thing. And then you're going to need a few tools, of course. You're going to need a wrench and some pliers to put the compression fittings on. Uh, if you're using the copper wire, you're going to need some wire snips, of course. Um, I'm going to use this copper tubing cutter so I can uh, get things as even as possible just because, I don't know, I'm picky. <laughs> and 
And then I recommend a bending spring. This is a half inch outer diameter bending spring because I have half inch copper tubing. And then of course you're going to need the copper tubing. I'm using 50 foot half inch out, outer diameter copper tubing, 3 8 inch inner diameter. And then of course something to wrap it around. I'm using a 4 inch piece of PVZ tubing for the inside and then I'm going to put some towels around the inside coil and make the outside coil. So those are the things you need. Let's get this thing going. It's not quite as even as I thought, but that's okay because I actually want the inner coil tighter and to cover more surface area because the middle of the work is going to be hotter and the water coming up through this outer coil is going to be a little bit warmer than the water going in the inner coil. So it's alright, we're just going to stretch this out a little bit to match the height of the middle coil. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to straighten each end out a couple inches, that way we can make the cold water in and hot water out. And this won't fit on the uh, cold water in tubing because since the coil around the PVC pipe was so tight it flattened it a little bit. Uh, it didn't happen on the outside coil but it did happen to the inside coil. So I'm going to have to try bending this by hand and not kinking it which I am not too happy about but hopefully I don't kink it because it'll suck really bad. I uh, won't ruin it, but it'll constrict the flow. Nobody wants constricted flow.
Okay, now I'm going to try bending these outward a little bit. That way, when it's in the boil pot, they'll hang out over the edge. And if there's any leaks, which hopefully there won't be, it won't leak into the wort. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to try to do that. Okay, so the kink is pretty much out, now I'm going to add the compression fittings. Uh, you just basically hand tighten the two fittings together and then put this piece into here. So it's on there. And tighten it down with the wrench. Okay, that should be good for that one. Tighten this one down. All right, so we've got the compression fittings on here. Now we're going to add the female and the male hose adapters to the ends. First, I'm going to add some of this uh, pipe thread seal tape on here. Just wrap it around once. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the hose adapters on there. Now what I'm going to do is take this 18 gauge copper wire and I'm gonna start wrapping the coils so they don't move around so much. You can see what I'm doing is basically I've got it wrapped around this inner and outer coil to pull them together a little bit so the spacing between the inner and outer coils is about the same on all sides. And then what I'm doing is I'm wrapping it around each outer coil and then coming up and around and wrapping around the one right above it so that the spacing between each outer coil is about the same. So if you can see, what I'm doing is I'm taking the wire Coming around the top coil, pulling it through, just pulling it straight through, then it makes a loop right there, and I just pull it tight, make sure this is flat, and pull it around, and then I just continue the same thing on the coil directly above it. Okay, so as you can see, the inner coil is now pulled towards the outer coil so that the spacing between the inner and outer coil is about the same all the way around the wort chiller. So what I'm going to do now is I'm probably just going to wrap this wire around one more time and then tie it off and snip it and then we will be good to go. Alright guys, so here's the final product. You've got the cold water in right here, which runs all the way down to the kink right there. That I got pretty much all the way worked out, but it would have been nice not to have had to deal with that at all. Anyway, that runs to this nicely wound inner coil, which runs all the way to the bottom of the chiller, and then starts the outer coil right there, 
which of course runs all the way to the top of the chiller. And they're connected right here uh, to make the spacing between the inner and outer coil about even and it makes it a lot more sturdy. You can pick it up and it's not bouncing and springing around. So that's nice. But anyway, the outer coil runs to the hot water out right here. So you can run your cold water in, go all the way through your hot wort and put the hot water out right there, cool your wort down nice and quickly, shorten up your brew day, have a nice brew and uh, make everything easier on yourself.